Welcome back to the Ed Show and thanks for watching tonight. The flags in West Virginia are flying at half staff today to honor the 29 miners killed in an explosion at the Upper Big Branch Mine. Here's how it's going to work. Soon enough, the TV crews are going to pack up, the media is going to lose interest, and this tragedy is going to be forgotten until the next time. Keep in mind, there never has to be a next time. Leo Gerard, president of the United Steelworkers International, says the slaughter must stop. He's not afraid to call it the way he sees it. What happened at this mine was not an accident. It was wrongful death. The mine ignored safety warnings because it was cheaper to pay fines than to fix the problems. That is a failure of government to effectively regulate when a company can put its workers' lives at risk with no more than a slap on the wrist and them ignoring every infraction and violation that comes their way. Leo Gerard, President of Steelworkers, joins us tonight here on The Ed Show. Mr. Gerard, you used the word slaughter. Is that a little extreme? What, what do you mean by that? Well, what, I, what I mean, Ed, is that uh, people are dying at work at the rate of uh, 16 people a week. Uh, the explosion at the Upper Big Branch Mine is clearly one of the ones we ought to focus on. Uh, but just that same week, we had uh, five people killed in an explosion at a uh, petroleum refinery. And what I'm saying is that people go to work during a living. They don't go there to die. And when we go to the upper big branch mine, I mean, this CEO said that these uh, regulations were silly. He said he doesn't pay, a, pay attention to the violation count. And that you see from his behavior, he views this as simply the cost of doing business. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of other industries that see this as the cost of doing business business. I think we've got to reform OSHA. One of the things that I think has to happen is where you get this kind of blatant neglect or ignoring of the rules. We've got to have the ability to not just find them, but to charge the CEO with criminal negligence. You're going down that road, and, and you, to go down that road, you're going to have to get the Attorney General in West Virginia, or you're going to have to get a local prosecutor. We all know how this company and the mining industry is intertwined with politics in West Virginia. How are you going to do this? I think we've got to expose what's gone on. I think what the comment you made is one that we have to be aware of, that uh, after today's moment of silence, the media will start to drift away, and in a week from now, they'll be on to something else. Probably, uh, you know, something about some entertainer somewhere who got drunk. But uh, we got to stay on this because it's not just the upper big branch mine. This is the one we're focusing on. It's not just that refinery. 16 workers a week are getting killed in the workplace. It's a slaughter that's going on. And part of the reason that's happening is obviously the last eight years of the Bush administration, we had a regulatory process that was not only ignored, but it was encouraging to ignore it. They had what they called voluntary protection. Uh, programs where the industry would agree not to be monitored. Uh, you know, you can't do that on the highway. And, and let me make my point about uh, criminal neglect and negligence. If somebody drinks some whiskey in a bar or has too many beers and leaves their, gets in their car and ran, runs into somebody and kills them, they're going to be charged with criminal negligence or criminal manslaughter because they took the risk. This CEO took a risk. He took a risk of he ignored the rules more than 12 times in that month that they were cited for ventilation problems. Well, he, also, a, he also said that violations are just a part of it. It's That's like right. a standard operating procedure. You're going to get violations. You're going to get uh, some infractions, and you just deal with it. And you, you write the check, and you move on. That's right. He said violations are a part of doing business in the mining industry. That's not true. Uh, we have a mining industry all over North America that uh, uh, functions, and violations aren't a part of doing business. They should not be a part of doing business. And in fact, the, the, I would argue that the safety rules aren't strong enough. So you say you want to do something about OSHA. You're going to need the president big time on your side on this one. And I, I know that uh, he made some phone calls quickly uh, asking questions about after this disaster took place. But how do you keep it alive? They, I mean, the mining industry, they are an unparalleled political force in West Virginia. 
Well, I think we've got to just not, not focus in just on the mining industry. I think that the mining industry in West Virginia and some other places, but let, let, let's focus in on this, this guy and this example, this Blankenship. The reality is that it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. We, we, can, we can fly in a spaceship and make those two spaceships connect in outer space without accidents. We can do, we fly airplanes that have fail-safe systems so that we don't have plane crashes every day. No one says a plane crash is a factor of doing business in the airlines. We try to prevent them. We can do that in, in, in not only in mining, but we can do that in industry. And I make the argument that uh, OSHA was brought in by Richard Nixon. It was updated then. Yeah. That's close to 40 years now. The workplace has changed. And, and to be honest, I think corporations have gotten more powerful. And so that we need to have regulatory reform so workers go to work to earn a living. They don't go there to die. Mr. Gerard, always a pleasure. Good to have you with us. We will stay on this story. And I just before you go, Leo, uh, what's your legal avenue here? Are, are you going to get a bevy of attorneys? Or are you, uh, ha, what's, what's the next step? Look, I, I think that it's important for all of us to give the families time to grieve yeah. and to pay respect to those families. Yeah. During that period of time, I want to work with whoever I can work with to do the kind of research, bring the set of facts to the folks that are going to be able to file the criminal negligence charge. And if, if we can't get a, a um, prosecutor to do it, then we've got to investigate whether or not we can do it ourselves as individuals. Okay. Uh, because I just don't think, Ed, I, we, we can't accept this as the way that no. business is being done for workers in this country. Workers deserve better, their families deserve better, their kids deserve better. No doubt. We will be on this story, and I appreciate your time tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you. Coming up, a 